Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to explore how to connect Snowflake using Python. Snowflake is a cloud-based data warehousing platform which allows you to store large amount of data and analyze them. And you know that, right? Python is very popular language nowadays to analyze the data and running the machine learning workflows. So that's why we have picked this one and we are going to see two types of authentication methods in this video. And Python, not Python, but Snowflake itself provides us two kind of libraries to use Python to connect Snowflake and run some code, right? So we are going to talk about both of them, not we are going to go deep in any of them, but we'll see how we can connect it and we'll run a couple of queries. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we have Python notebook. So basically you have to have Visual Studio code, open the Visual Studio code, create one file with this IPYNB Python notebook. Okay, so this is the extension, use that and create one blank file. And when you open it in Visual Studio code first time, so probably you might not have this package to run this or to render Python notebook. So you will, uh, you will be asked to install that extension. You just allow that and install it. Okay. Now, once you have that, you have to start running on, or you can write the code into cells. So it is allowing us to write two cells. One is code and second is markdown. So suppose you are creating one on a one project or one experiment, you can always create markdown cells and you can put nodes there as well. So here, suppose I want to put the not like install packages, install required packages. Okay. If I enter this, it will automatically render this markdown text. Now let's not talk about much about Python notebook. This is just a basic level of understanding I wanted to give you. Now, as I have already added a lot of cells to demo today so you can understand how we can use it okay further you have to have python virtual environment which you have been you are going to select here in this notebook so as you can see here i have selected one kernel so in python notebook they call it a kernel so when you run this any cell python code base cell it will automatically ask you to select a kernel so it will open up this window and you have to select kernel. So right now it is selected. So it's, it tells me that select another kernel. So when I click on that, it will show me all the virtual environments available for me. But for me, I have already selected. So I do not need to do anything. Okay. Now what Snowflake provides us to connect Snowflake from Python. That is there are two packages available. One is Snowflake Connector Python. So which is basically when you are running some Python code outside the Snowflake, then you will be end up using this Snowflake Connector Python. But Snowflake Snowpark Python is also useful when you are running the Python code inside the Snowflake itself because they are providing a Snowpark based container services. So that will be helpful. But we are going to see both of them how we can connect snowflake so before that running anything we have to install them so this is the syntax of installing any python package in the cell from notebook so exclamation mark space and then pip install and the whatever package name you can also provide the version but I am not providing it so suppose even you are just running or experimenting you might be using the latest version so you just enter this and it will try to install both the packages in my case i have already installed both of them so it will tell me these are already installed so it says that requirement already satisfied for this snowflake connector python so once you install it and your experiment is completed, then you want to put it in the requirements.txt. You take it from here. You just put like this in your requirement.txt. So this is the version. Same for Snowpark Python as well. So it is 1.14.0. 
So both of them are installed now. I'll just uh, clear this output. So now as this is the first version I'm talking about first time. So you have to install, sorry, you have to import snowflake.connector. Then if it is imported, then you can at least be sure that that package is installed properly. So now as you can see, it runs successfully. That means this connector package is installed successfully. Now, one more thing that I have some credentials available, but I do not want to show or I want to secure it. What you can do here is that I have created one environment file. So this is the sample file, but there is another file. You can see here, this is .env, which is again, it stores the real credentials, which is my account's credential, but you can create the file like this. So there are some parameters which are optional, like uh, when you are using password, you might not need these two variables, but if you are using these two, then you might not need Python or oh, sorry, password. Okay. So, and these are also some optional parameters. If you do not want to put into connection, connection uh, parameters, then also you are being fine. Okay. So now this is the sample file. So I am just going to use this dot env package. If it is not installed in your environment, then you can install it and then you have to run it like this. So once you do this automatically, this all, all environment variable will be available. So if you want to check like e environment and then if I want to see uh, user. Okay. So let me run this. So it says that HNM portal is your user. This is coming from env file dot env file. Okay. Now we have to build a dictionary. You can directly give the parameters like here, like user is equal to username, password is equal to password like that. Okay. But I am just going to create a dictionary because I can use this dictionary at different level as well. So suppose I want to connect at two places, then I'll just end up using this connection parameter variable. And this is very clean and neat code as well. So you can use this. So once the connection parameters is there, what we are doing here is that user, password and account. So these are the three primary and required parameters which you have to give because account is required to know which account to use and what are the credentials. So similarly, when you go to browser, you enter that you just give the account the URL and username password, right? So that's all they need to connect. But if you give the role warehouse database schema, then directly you can run some queries like select star from table name. So whatever table is available in the schema directly, you can access that. Okay. So yeah, uh, now, as we have created this connection parameters. So this is the syntax of connecting like this is already installed, right? Sorry, imported. So snowflake.connector.connect and then double star. So it's a keyword argument style, which you have to give double star this. So once you do this, it will let's run this now. If connection successful, then there will not be any error. Otherwise it will raise an exception. Let's say if it connects successfully or not. So basically I have enabled MFA for this. So let's see if I have got, yeah, look at this. I have got one uh, MFA push because we have enabled that push. So once I will approve, I have approved, I have approved it and now connection is successful. So now connection is successful. Then we can run some queries now. So you can create the cursor. Okay. So like cursor is equal to session dot cursor. So that means when you create a cursor, it creates a session. Okay. I mean connection. So once you create that and uh, you run like this cursor dot execute and then it will give you the data. Okay. Now, if you want to get that, what you can do is there are multiple options are available like fetch arrow all arrow batches pandas all pandas batches fetch all fetch many fetch one so these are the functions you can use so suppose you want to get the data frame so you can use pandas all if you want to get if you are having multiple rows i mean many many rows then you can use the batches so it will stream the data so suppose i am going to use pandas all okay 
so now let me see if we can dot head here sorry and I'll just remove it and if I run this as you can see we can see all those five employees available in that table we have been seen in the database here right here so whichever we have inserted now so this is the one way of connecting to Snowflake. So what, what we did is that username, password only. This is basic, simple authentication. Of course, you will not be using MFA here because when you're running script, you do not want to be part of that process. It is It should be an automation, right? It should be an automatic process. Suppose you want to run this script every one hour, then you cannot run it if MFA is enabled because you will get that approval request every one hour and you have to approve it if you don't this will fail so you cannot use it okay now so there is another way of doing is that key pair authentication so we in last video itself we talked about how we can connect uh, snowflake using key pair authentication through snow sql the same key pair authentication we can use in uh, python connector as well from the python right so what we have done is here that password is always there. I mean, I have put that in dot .eon because I wanted to show both of them uh, what the methods. But now I have private key file which I created last time in that one of the folder called test, right? If you remember or if you don't, you can go and look at that video so you'll understand how we can use keeper authentication, how we can generate them, okay? So I have generated already so I'll use the path here and I'll put it like private key file and private key file password. Okay. So these are the two variables we have to use. When you use these two variables, you do not need to use password because both of them is enough. So both are separate authentication method. Now look at this. So before going, uh, before understanding this cell, let's go to this parameter. So this is another way of connecting. So I'll just showcase that. So account, user, and the instead of password, you need file and password. So basically this uh, library supports these two parameters like file and file password. So we have encrypted file, right? So encrypted file path you have to provide for private key and the uh, whatever password you use to uh, create that encrypted Python uh, private key right so that password you have to give here but when i give this let me show you that and if i run this it gives me error i don't know what is the issue i have to look into that first suppose if i use this let me see if i use encode here what happens okay so if you use that look at this this is the one way of connecting to snowflake using private key so you just pass the file uh, file path and the password of that file so once you provide that automatically it will connect successfully but suppose you do not want to do this way then there is another way of doing that suppose you want to give private key only so there are two ways right so this is the way where you have to use cryptography package you have to import this default backend, RSA, DSA algorithms, and then serialization. So all of them using this is a snippet. You can uh, find out. I will put this uh, whole uh, Python notebook in a, my one of the source code, and I will put the link in our uh, video itself. So you can look at there. So what you are doing here is that you are reading the file. You are loading the private key by giving the password and this backend. And it is reading it so this private key is now read right now it is converting this private bytes into normal one no uh, non-encrypted one so this is the pkb i mean private key bytes okay and it is using the der encoding and this is the private key format and the algorithm is no encryption so now when you provide this private key it doesn't need any uh, password because it has the bytes itself directly so now once you do this you will be also be connecting with that as well 
so now the connection is done again i want to showcase one more thing that the same library sorry same uh, same query i'm going to use but i'm going to use this time dict cursor so that was earlier uh, normal cursor so it gives you suppose if i do like this data dot fetch all okay and if i comment it and let me run it so if you see this is giving us a array of tuples right now if you use the dict cursor so basically dict cursor is useful because when you run this you will get the data in dictionary format so whenever you are running some or directly creating some apis from this database it is going to be a helpful one okay so the same same employees you are getting with this query as well now let me show you that snow park how it connects so in snow uh, snow park library you have to import this session and in session you have to use builder dot config so this is the syntax and you have to pass the connection parameters so here it doesn't need uh, kw args i mean keyword arguments but it is asking for the dictionary itself see this config needs dictionary itself as an input so you do not need to put double star here okay make sure that so once you run this it will give you the session so now how you can use this session so whatever you are doing here is this all query going to run in snowflake itself so suppose uh, earlier what we could we could do here is like we have to put limit 5 or 10 something here okay but so there is no other way to execute the queries but here what can you do is that suppose you want to use the database this then you can pass like this you can use the schema so this is basically a snow park i mean snowflake session itself and uh, when you want to access table employees and select star and so it will give you all the data of that employee with all the columns but suppose you want to get only three records and only couple of columns then you can write the syntax like this session dot table select id first name last name dot limit so if i put limit 3 here and run the show it will automatically build the query behind the scene and it will show you this value okay so yeah this is how you can use this snow park and snow flag connector so both of the libraries are very useful we are going to talk about both of them in future videos also because we might be creating some projects also using snowflake so please stay tuned and uh, please subscribe my channel also to get those kind of videos okay so yeah uh, that's pretty much from this video i hope you found this one is useful if you want to learn more about snowflake go and check my other videos so they are also helpful and yes uh, yeah thank you very much uh, and i will see you in the next video thank you